He's rejoicing over me with singing. He is very, very happy. Therefore, I can be happy all day long because I know that when I love God sincerely, God is very happy with me. Okay, and then um, Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget. So here, God says that, you know, can a woman forget her nursing child? You know, God has put His love into the mothers of human and of animals. That many animals, they love their babies. You know, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? The woman have strong love for the babies because God put that love in them. It's God who has that love. And surely, the, even if they will forget, I will not forget you. So God is telling us, you know, you see, the mothers cannot forget the baby, so I won't forget you either. I will not forget you. You are precious to me. You are important to me. So I hope that we all say, God is remembering me now. God is thinking about me now. God is, uh, He wants to bless me now. He has a wonderful plan today for me. So he, God always wants to bless us. He has strong compassion. He's thinking about us all the time. He cannot forget us. He remembers all the time. So we can tell ourselves, God is remembering me. He has compassion on me. He wants to bless me. He has a wonderful plan for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then Zephaniah 3.17 He will take great delight in you and He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So God will take great delight in us. You know, for those who love Him, to obey Him, He takes great delight in us. He will quiet us with His love. He will soothe us with His love. And He will rejoice over us with singing. He will rejoice over us all the time. He is singing over us. He is rejoicing over us. You know, sometimes we think that God is very stern. You know, the Bible tells us that He's a joyful God. And uh, in Matthew 25, uh, the, uh, the parable of the talents. The, the servant with the five talents and the two talents earned the uh, money back. And then the master said, come and enjoy the happiness of your master. So when we go to heaven, we enjoy his happiness. Heaven is full of happiness. God is full of happiness. God is a joyful God. He is a graceful God, so we can say, I can rejoice over you. I can relax over you. God, you are quieting me with your love. You are delighting in me, and you are rejoicing over me with singing. So I hope we all remember this, all these promises of God. You know, there are all kinds of promises in the Bible. But sometimes people just look at the punishment. You know, the Bible does talk about punishment. If we continue to sin, there are punishment. But we should not be just looking at the punishment. We should be looking at. We should be looking at uh, you know God's grace all the time. Romans eight thirty two, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all. How will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things? That God did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. He will also along with Jesus graciously give us all things. So if He has given us His most beloved Son, that Jesus is most precious to Him, and He has given us His Son, He will also give us all things with Him. The more we trust in God, the more we love God, then the more he, God will prepare for us things eyes have not seen, that He will prepare for us things that are so wonderful. So He, he will give us all things when we trust in Him and follow Him and obey Him and serve Him. Now, we notice that 
the Bible promises blessings to those who trust in Him, love Him, obey Him, and serve Him. Uh, you know, some people think they just believe in Jesus and they don't do any. They do, do. They don't do anything, and God still blesses them. There is no such promise. Jesus said, "You know, the axe is already on the tree. The branches that doesn't that doesn't bear the fruit will be cut off. And uh, the branches that are in me that do, does not bear fruit will be cut off. That's in uh, John 15. So." The Bible does tell us that if a person just believes, you know, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So we don't just believe, we believe and trust in God. Because when God is in us, when the Holy Spirit is in us, when we trust in God, then the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And the Holy Spirit will change our life. The Holy Spirit will motivate us to love God, to obey God, to follow God. The Holy Spirit will uh, f motivate us all the time. So, uh, he, he always will change us. And then when we follow Him and change according to His will, then He'll give us all these blessings. So, the blessings of God is for people who trust in God, who love Him and obey Him, then He'll be blessed. That in Psalm 91, God says that, you know, for those who love me, that I'll put Him on a high place. I'll make Him honorable. So the Bible has promised us uh, that when we trust in Him and obey Him, now it's not by, uh, when we do good works, it's not to earn the blessing. It's just God wants to bless us. When we tr uh, trust in Him and have a close relationship with Him and let the Holy Spirit move us, let the Holy Spirit move our life, then we're following God, then we're connected to God, then we're connected to God. When we're connected to God, then He'll, He can continue to bless us. But if a Christian doesn't love Him and doesn't obey Him, doesn't pray, then He would be distant from God. He'll be far away from God. That his heart is not open to God. That God's blessings cannot come to him. So, it's not by our good works that God blesses us. It's when we are connected to God, when we trust in Him, when we obey Him. Because when we trust in Him, then we're connected to Him. When we trust in Him, then we'll have good works. Then we'll obey Him naturally. We'll obey Him. So obedience comes from the relationship with God. The relationship with God will bring obedience. And when we obey Him, when we trust in Him and obey Him, then God is very happy and He'll reward us greatly. So it's a, uh, a promise of grace. It's our grace that He has blessed us. It's not by, we, can, we don't earn it because we don't deserve to be uh, to be rewarded. Our good works are not perfect. We don't deserve to be rewarded. It's just God is good. And so God wants to bless us. Okay? And then, um, so He'll give us, graciously give us all things. The more we love Him, the more He'll bless us. The more we, you know, uh, the more a person loves God and obey Him and serve Him, the more God will prepare for him so that he will enter God's perfect plan, so that his life will go to the highest level, so that he can bless more people because he's connected to God. The more we're connected to God, the more God will flow through us, that our life will be full of joy and strength and power and confidence and miracles. Okay, and then faith. What is faith? You know, sometimes people think, you know, I uh, have to believe. You know, actually, usually I don't want to use have to uh, in my teaching. I just say, trust in God. Trust in God and God will bless you. So instead of saying you have to pray, I'll say when you pray, God blesses you. So I use the word when. When you trust in God, God's blessings will pour upon your life because trust 
Faith is trusting in God. I trust in God. God blesses all those people who have faith in Him. When we trust in God, God is happy and He'll bless us. And God has promised so many things. In 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. So even when we are faithless, He remains faithful because He cannot deny Himself. He will rem remain faithful. He will continue to, to be faithful. And I have this, um, this to encourage this saying that I, I, uh, I think is God who, who, um, who gave this thought to me. When He promised, I believe. When God promised, I believe. When God works, I believe. So when God promised, I believe. When God works, I believe. I trust in Him. He will do great things for us, through us. No. So faith is just trusting in God. Trusting that God will do great things. Now some people think faith is, oh, I really have to believe very hard, very hard, very hard. You know, when we have confidence in God, we don't have to believe, have to believe very, very hard. We just say, I trust in God. He is worthy, trustworthy. He will for sure do the things He has promised. Therefore, I trust in Him. He'll take care of me. He'll have, con He'll, I have confidence in Him. He'll bless me. So I can trust in God. I can trust in God anytime because He is trustworthy. And we should be motivated by God's grace to obey Him. Okay, and then motivated by the law will give us pressure and fear. Living in God's grace does not mean we can sin freely. We don't sin. We know that sin is destructive. And motivated by God's grace to obey God give us freedom and a fruitful life. When we are motivated by God's grace to obey God, we have freedom, we have joy, we are relaxed, and also we'll be fruitful. But we know that we don't want to sin because sin is always destructive. Any small sin, any small sinful thought can destroy our life. So we don't want to allow sin to stay in our life. If we allow sin, allow anger, frustration, fear, um, worry, doubt, or lust to stay in our heart, it will take away our joy and our strength. And we thank God. When we repent, God is very happy. And when we obey Him, He's very happy. So we want to take care of any sinful thought, any sinful thought we have. We want to take care of that. We won't, don't want to let the sinful thought stay in our life. Okay, and uh, now this next point is very important. It is not hard to please God, although it's impossible to be perfect. Now we cannot be perfect. But even when we're not perfect, when we try to please God, we're trying to obey God, God is very happy. It's not hard to please God, even though when we're not, happy, uh, when we're not perfect, even when we're not perfect. So when we're not perfect, even when we, when we sin, Luke 15, 7, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So one person, one sinner who repents, there is more joy in heaven. There is much joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. So we can all say, wow, uh, when I sin and I repent, God is very happy. But of course we don't want to sin again. We try not to sin again. We try our best not to sin again because we know that sins are destructive. But if we do sin, then we ask God to forgive us and He is very happy to forgive us and then there is joy in heaven and then when we come to God it's not hard to come close to God in James 4 8 come near to me to God and he will come near to you and John 15 4 remain in me as I also remain in you and you bear much fruit so when we come to God then he'll come to us when we remain in, in Jesus, He will also re, remain, remain in us and He will cause us to have good fruits. So He will always respond when we pray to Him sincerely. A contrite heart He will not despise. That 
He would always respond to us when we sincerely come to Him. So we have confidence. It's not hard to come to God. And then have an intimate relationship with God. It's not hard. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So he is, Jesus is the vine. Uh, this is figurative language. Okay, Jesus is not a tree. It's a figurative language. He is like the vine, and we are like the branches. And when we abide in Him, and then He will abide in us, and then we will bear much fruit. Then, because wherever He is, He is full of life, He is full of joy, He is full of good works. Then the good works will flow out from Him inside of us. So He will always respond to us. He will always cause us to bear fruit. So it's not hard to come to Him. It's not hard to come to Him when we have sinned. It's not hard to live in Him. And then when we serve God, even a cup of cold water, Mark 9, 41, For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, surely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. So whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in Jesus' name, because you belong to Christ. So this mainly talk about giving to Christians. But it also applies when we give to non-Christians to try to bring them to Jesus. So we want them to belong to Jesus. So we give our water to people and tell them about Jesus. We give our food or give uh, uh, gifts and then we give to people and say, well, Jesus loves you. And when you trust in Jesus, Jesus will continue to bless you. So we, when we do this to people or to Christians, when we do little thing, a cup of water, whoever gives you a cup of water, he'll by no means lose his reward. So that means whatever little thing we do, God is very happy. In, in Matthew 10, 41 to 42, it says that, you know, uh, if you give, uh, re receive uh, a prophet in the, prophets, in the name of a prophet, you uh, receive the uh, reward of a prophet. So even if you are not a prophet, you receive a prophet, you receive his reward. Well, wow, that's very, very nice. And then when we receive a righteous person, uh, then he re will also re receive the reward of a righteous person. And then if we don't find a prophet, we don't find a righteous person, we just find a little one. So whoever, you know, in the name of disciple, that you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose your reward. So if we cannot find a prophet, we not, cannot find a righteous man, you just find a little one and we give him a cup of cold water, then we we'll by no means lose the reward. That means, even when we do a little thing to a, an important person, we we'll still have the reward. That means it's not hard to please God. So I hope that sticks in your mind. It's not hard to please God. Now, when we sin, then we repent. We want to repent because sin will take away our blessings. So we want to repent. But we know that the moment we repent, God is very, very happy. God will forgive us. God will bless us. Therefore, we can f obey God and love God willingly. That we can obey Him and serve Him willingly and joyfully. Because I know that God is very happy with me. Whenever I trust in Him and obey Him, I know that whenever I obey God, God is very happy with me. That way, then we know that it's not hard to please God. So I hope that all day long you say it's not hard to please God. So all day long I do this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. God is so wonderful. When I do this all day long, then I feel joyful. I know that God is happy because when I abide in Him, He'll abide in me and I'll bear much fruit. So I know that He'll always respond to me. When I trust in God, He'll always respond to me. So I... All day long, I want to rejoice in God. I want to thank God. And I know that God is very happy. And so I'm very happy too. So that way, I hope that you understand this and apply it to your life. And then you live in joy all the time. Okay? And then God is happy to bless us when we love and obey Him. So that He has promised us. He will bless us. 2 Corinthians 5.14 
For the love of Christ compels us before we judge this, judge thus, that if one die for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for him and rose again. So it's the love of God that drives us. Because we know that if one died for us, Jesus died for us, then we we'll all died in him. That we want to crucify ourselves with Jesus. And he died for all that those who live should no, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So now we we'll live for Jesus who died for us and rose again. So he, it is his great love that drives us. Now I'm, I'm driven by his love. So the mo main motivation should be God's love. He loves us so much. He has prepared so many things for us. So I love Him all the time. I rejoice in Him all the time. I enjoy Him all the time. All these are God's blessings. I'm living in God's grace. And the more we love Him, the more He'll bless us, the more uh, our life will go to a higher level. So it's God's love that motivates us. And Romans 8, 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So we did not receive the spirit of bondage, of slavery, to fear, but we received the spirit of adoption, that we are adopted as children of God, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, 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 you are my Father. So we have this confidence. We are not slaves, we are His children. But we are willingly serving God as a slave. I'm willing, I'm a willing servant of God. But our position is a child of God. We are very precious. So we have the spirit of adoption. And then how we can be blessed by God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. When we love Him, He'll prepare for, them for things we can never imagine. Now in my whole lifetime, I can see blessings over and over and over again. That He has blessed me in so many, so many ways. I thank God that He's blessing me so many ways that I can never imagine. He gave me good education even though I came from a very poor family you know because in my family my father gambled a lot and when I was in high school sometimes I work and earn some money and I buy some clothing for myself and then time and again I found that the the uh, the, the coats uh, that I bought disappeared and I asked them where did it go and uh, and the father said you know he had sold it so that he can get money to gamble I came from that kind of family uh, from that kind of family I would not have the opportunity to, opportunity to have so much education but after I believe in Jesus when I realized that God is real when I realized that there's really a God and there is really heaven I was very, very happy. I, I said, wow, God is so real. And I studied the evidence. I, I saw that God is real. God is real. So I have confidence in God. And then I, 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 I do evangelism to many people. I told many people about Jesus. And then I said, so many people don't know Jesus. I want to tell people about Jesus. And if it's God's will, please let me be, become a pastor. So I, shortly after I became a a Christian I said to God if you are willing let me be a pastor and that came true years later and then God prepared for me that someone proposed to me to let me go to overseas to have the opportunity to study and I have a bachelor degree in Bible college and two master degree in theology and I thank God I thank God that he gave me all kinds of opportunity to learn different things, to how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and how to teach, and how to rejoice in the Lord. Now this first came from my seminary that talked about the balance of uh, the law and the gospel. 
that they talk about mainly the gospel. But, it, but I expand it to not just the gospel, but the grace of God, all the blessings of God, the gospel and all the blessings. So I balance of the law of God and His blessings. And then, you know, I find that I can live in joy and also have different ways to teach people and then they can, you know, it's not hard to motivate people to love God. And, and so that's wonderful. So God has prepared for me things I never uh, imagined. And now I have this Global Fire Missions Ministries and I thank God that I can help different, you know, it has helped me to go to the mission field to 15 countries and also I can do training for different groups. Uh, so I thank God for all these opportunities that God has provided for me. And He will provide for you too if you love Him. He'll open the way for you. Okay, and then Matthew 6, 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So the promises here are not just to anyone who just sit idle. The first promise, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, is the promises, the promises given to those who love Him, who love God. And the second promise here in Matthew 6, 33, is for those who seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? To, that means to, I want to bring more people to believe in Jesus, that they can enter the kingdom of God. The first thing, I want to bring more people to, into the kingdom of God. And the second meaning is, I want God to be the king in my heart because where, I where people obey God, there is His kingdom. I want the kingdom of God descend into my heart, that I obey Him totally. I let God be my Lord, my master. I let God be my master in my family. I let God be my master in my church. In wherever I go, I tell people about Jesus. So I seek the kingdom of God. I want more people to believe in Jesus and I also want God to be the king in my whole life. So that is seeking His kingdom. And then His righteousness. There are two righteousness. First is the righteousness of Christ. The righteous robe of Christ. When I trust in Jesus, I have the righteous robe of Christ. That He put His righteousness on me. Then I'll be like Christ when God looks at me. He'll see the righteousness. Righteousness means the good deeds obeying the commandments of God. So he'll see the perfect uh, righteousness of Christ on me. That is the righteous robe. That, that is to first seek his righteousness and also the righteousness of the saints. In Revelation chapter 19 talk about the righteous uh, robe of the, uh, the righteous acts of the saints. That when we obey God, when we love God, when we serve God, this becomes our righteousness also. So we seek righteousness of Christ and also our own obedience, our righteousness. But not to be safe. Righteousness is just to glorify God. It's the fruit of salvation. And all these things, all the things will be added to us. God will give us all things. God will give us all kinds of blessings. And then uh, we should learn to delight in God, to rejoice in God, to be happy because of God. In Psalm 37, 4, there it says that, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. So, when we want blessings from God, it's important to love God and seek His kingdom and His righteousness. And also delight ourselves in the Lord. Now, how do we delight ourselves in the Lord? That means we count the good things of God. God has created us. God has created the world. God has created food. God has given us eternal life. God has uh, Jesus, sent Jesus to die for us. God has uh, given us a spirit, new spiritual life and the Holy Spirit lives in us. He has given us the Bible. He has given us a wonderful plan. It's so good. Everything is so good and heaven is so good, so good, so good. I hope that you all say, God is so good. God is so good. So we say, God is so good. Then we delight in God. Let me tell you, I delight in God all the time. I say, God, I'm, I rejoice in you. I thank you. I thank you. You're so wonderful. So we delight in God. 
And then He'll give you the designs of your heart. Then He'll give you the things you desire. And also, Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll cause you to ride on the heights of the earth, that He'll cause you to go higher and higher. You go higher and higher to a higher level when we delight in God. So all day long, I look at everything. I say, all these things came from God. Everything we see around us came from God. Now, you might say, well, it's manufactured by people. But the material has to come from God. And it's God who gave us wisdom to create different objects, to manufacture different objects. So all this came from God. Thank God, thank God for everything. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 30, 28. And we know that in all things God works for, for the good for, of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So all things, in all things God works for the good for those who love Him. So in suffering and in good times, uh, that in all times, all difficult situations or, or good situations, in all the situations, all things work for good. What does that mean? That means even when we suffer, then we trust in God more, rely on God more, and then we'll be blessed by God. And then, so that's in the difficult times, we trust in God, and then we'll be blessed. And then in good times, when we obey God, then God will bless us. God will give us, uh, that God will use our strength and resource to bless more people. So all situation, no matter what, even when people yell at you, uh, God still bless us. When we love God, when we are not bothered by people, even when people hurt us, we are not bothered by them. So He did not spare His own Son, but deliver Him up for us. He shall also give us all things. So all things will be given to us. Okay, now, uh, let me see. Okay, we'll finish this. Four kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. First, prayer of grace. That we declare God is loving me. God is blessing me. God is a wonderful player in my life. God wants to raise my life up to a high level. So always in the prayer, in, we can uh, declare the grace of God. God is loving us. God is with us. God is blessing us. God is happy with us when we obey Him. Thank you, God. And then prayer of worship. That Now prayer of grace is from God to us. God is loving us. Prayer of worship is is from us to God. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I adore you. I, and then I end in more emotional words. I need you. I hold on to you. I rely on you. I like you. I enjoy you. You know, God enjoy our companion. God rejoice over us with singing. That means He's rejoicing with us. He enjoy our companion. So if God enjoy us, we can enjoy Him too also. So I, I would say, God, I need you. I I rejoice in you. I enjoy you. The more we enjoy God, that we delight in God, the more He'll bless us. Interactive prayer, whenever we pray to Him and love Him and obey Him, He's very happy. So I believe that. Anytime we pray, God is very happy with us. So I hope that you, all the time you say, I love God. God is happy with me. I love God. God is blessing me. God is uh, uh, He's very happy with me now, so I can be happy also, because God is happy with me when I love Him and obey Him. And then prayer of commitment, that will say, Lord, I, I give my life to You, I obey You, I trust in You, I follow You. Okay, so uh, God bless you. This is the end of the first session. We'll pause for 10 minutes and then we'll start again. And please let me know uh, when you're ready there. And uh, and then if you have any questions, send me in the Africa Leader Group, okay? Uh, send me in that group, and then I'll respond to you. And God be with you. God give you strength. And God is happy with you. Hallelujah.